Hello, everybody. I'm so excited for our first training in February and the first training that we're doing with a guest speaker in 2020. I'm so excited. One of my goals has been to, for this year, is to invite a guest speaker once a month. And I'm so excited that um, my cousin and my friend, Jessica Walker, is going to be our very first speaker. Um, Jessica is going to share her story with us, but uh, she is someone who's very, very inspiring to me. I've known her. She's known me since before I was born. <laughs> so she's known me my whole entire life. And um, I um, grown up with her and then um, uh, have just had the opportunity to watch her and her growth and everything over the past few years. And uh, she has an incredible story of transformation and perseverance. And um, I invited her on today to just chat with us about, uh, you know, the importance of failure and um, not giving up and being in it for the long haul. So I'm really excited to hear her story and chat with her and hopefully we all can get some awesome takeaways from her. And so uh, let me get this video on you and then um, Jessica, please introduce yourself. Tell us all about you. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. I just adore my cousin Polly. She's my favorite cousin, but don't show the other cousins this video. <laughs> um, anyway, yes, like I've known her my whole life and um, we have had a lot of fun memories together, but I'm really honored that she asked me to come here today to talk to you. Um, so I'm Jessica Walker, like she said, I um, am a wife and a mother of five children. Uh, they're not so much children anymore. My youngest is 11, my oldest is 24, so I have three still at home. Um, I have spent a lot of my life just 100% dedicated to being a mom, which is amazing, but um, through that whole uh, life evolving commitment, I kind of lost sight of who I was, and I didn't take very good care of myself. I gave all of everything I had to my kids, and I didn't realize that by doing that, I wasn't necessarily being the best mom I could. Um, so I was very overweight, and I was definitely a people pleaser. So I said yes to everything. I volunteered in the schools all the time, which don't get me wrong, that's an amazing thing to do. But I just, the things that I did, I filled up my time with um, all the things that I thought would help me feel good about myself. And what I didn't realize is that by doing that and giving myself to everyone else and not take care, taking care of myself, that it was like this uh, void that I couldn't fill, fill up. So my uh, way to feel better was by eating. And so I, I spent a lot of time focused on food and which was why I had such a weight problem. And anyway, um, so I found myself really unhappy despite I had this really happy life. I have an amazing husband and great kids and wonderful friends and um, just surrounded by goodness, but I was really unhappy with myself. And uh, I had tried and failed in losing weight for probably 20 years. Like I would try all the different diets and the um, different programs and I start something, but I'd always quit. Uh, and then I'd gain the weight back and feel even worse about myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, anyway, I, this went on for a lot of years and I just felt worse and worse about myself, but I was really good at hiding it because I'm a really happy, positive person. And so I don't think anybody realized how unhappy I was actually. Oh yeah. And I can totally speak to that. Like knowing you, like you would totally seem like the happiest person in the world. So you would never know that there was like anything internally going on. You know, it just goes to show we never know like the struggles people are going through. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. And we can have lots of good things going on in our life and still be unhappy. And what I came to learn eventually was that just I was not being true to myself. I wasn't taking care of myself. And so, of course, I wasn't feeling happy, which then made me show up in a way I didn't really like to my kids and my husband and yeah. all of that stuff. So anyway, um, I reached a pretty low point. Um, it happened when, uh, well, in like within a couple months, I had like three different people ask me if I was pregnant, which was devastating. My youngest was like five or six, you know, and I was clearly not pregnant. Mm -hmm. And that's the most awkward interchange. Oh, totally. <laughs> and then uh, one of them was my daughter that asked me if I was pregnant. Oh, that was awful. Anyway, um, and then another oh. thing happened. 
that happened was my wedding ring. Um, so the diamond fell out of my wedding ring. Oh. And that was really, really sad, but I found it, but mm -hmm. I could not get the ring off my finger. So oh. I couldn't get off my finger to like take it to the jeweler and have it fixed. And so that night, my husband cut my ring off my finger and I was just mm -hmm. like crying. I was so embarrassed and just so angry at myself. It was just kind of a moment where it all kind of came crashing down. My yeah. kids were up there. It was just like a very public experience, like in my family. And so I just promised myself that night, like I am going to change. And I, I made a commitment to myself that I wasn't going to get my ring fixed until I had lost weight and was going to feel good about that I could wear that ring forever at the size that it needed to be. Mm -hmm. So um, long story short, I found some really amazing tools that were shared with me by a friend that was all about like changing our thoughts and changing our mindset. And it wasn't so focused on changing the food or the diet or whatever, all those products you can find anywhere. I done Weight Watchers. I done everything you can imagine. And those programs have value, like they do work. But unless you fix what's going on in here, you can lose weight, but it's not going to last. And you're going to eventually end up being where you were. So what I learned is this, as I started having success and changing my thoughts, and working on those kinds of things, like it was rippling out into all other areas of my life. And I started to realize how much power I actually had to change my own life, that nobody could do that for me. And it was, I started to gain confidence because one of the problems I had is that I had never kept commitments to myself. I would mm. say I was gonna do something and I would do it for a little while, but then I'd eventually just kind of slide back to my old habits. So as I started keeping commitments to myself, I started changing the way I felt about myself and realizing that, hey, I actually can do this. So over the period of a year and three months, I lost 100 pounds. That was my goal. And I didn't follow anybody's diet plan. I didn't um, use any product. I didn't pay any money. I just changed my thoughts, which sounds like just a simple fix, but it took a lot of practice and a lot of work to do that. And um, that was two years ago. Wow. Years ago. So I, um, I have continued in that pattern of um, using my mindset or changing my mindset so that I could achieve the goals of my life. And one of those goals became wanting to share this with other women. And not just the weight loss, taking control of our life, and getting the results that we want and seeing that we have the power within us to create any result we want in our life. And it's all connected to our thoughts. So um, I decided it was a really scary leap for me, but I decided to become a life and weight coach, which is how I found these tools was through a life and weight coach. So I'm just finishing my schooling. I just got my certification. You can see back here on the wall. Ooh, it looks so beautiful. <laughs> And so I am now a certified life and weight coach, and it's something I never dreamed in a million years I would do, but I've, I'm helping other women to discover the power they have in their life to get the results they want. And, and the amazing thing about this is that it truly does relate to anything in our lives. If you're not overweight, you're struggling with something else. Like every person has yeah. a struggle of some kind, and the answers are already within us. It's just hard for us to see our own, our own thoughts and how they're mm -hmm. keeping us, keeping us stuck and not progressing. So that's what I do now. I, um, I am a, a weight coach, but also a life coach as in I, I coach on other things besides just weight. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm still busy with, I do have a day job that I'm working to quit as I gain clients. And mm -hmm. I have lots of other things going on in my life, but this is my passion to share this message. Oh, that's so cool. And I have so many questions. I need to grab a bucket of seashells out of my closet really fast because Audrey's trying to make an inside beach and <laughs> won't stop coming in here and bugging me for it. So I'm going to go grab it really fast. And then I have questions. I totally get that because I've raised five kiddos and there's always something they need. Oh. <laughs> okay, Audrey, here's the seashells. All right. <laughs> have fun. All right. Okay. So sorry about that. Um, what I love about what you said, um, 
like what I love the most about what your story is how you you're like we already have the tools and it's it's basically our thoughts and it just kind of goes to show how much control like our thoughts have over our actions and totally. yeah. I I'm, I'm trying to remember there's like some quote it's like our thoughts dictate our you know our words which di our actions which dictate our okay I don't know <laughs> no I can tell you I can teach you all about that <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. I'm like butchering it. That's why we need you. Um, but so in our kind of in our case, like so in a direct selling business, it's basically like you're working your own business, like similar to like a life coaching business or whatever. You have your own business and right. um just entrepreneurship in general can be such a tough thing to uh, just do day in and day out, you know, there's a lot of times you'll feel like quitting or like maybe you have a bad month or, um, you know, or you have goals that you're setting for yourself. And um, so I'd love to kind of talk about how mindset plays into like being successful in your business, because one of the things that we're coached to do is to listen to personal development every single day because yeah. that's what keeps the negative thoughts at bay. And the times when I am struggling and I'll like reach out to any friends, one of the things they'll say is, well, are you listening to your personal development? And I'm like, oh, kind of slack in there. And a lot of times, you know, and that can be like scripture. It can be, there's so many amazing books out there, you know, about totally. personal growth and whatnot. So anyway, I'd love for you to like speak to that mindset and how it affects you know, you know, how our thoughts affect our actions. Absolutely. Okay. I love teaching about this because it all starts with our thoughts. So I just want you to kind of go along with this with me for a minute on this. So you think a thought and every thought that we think creates a feeling. So all of our actions are driven from our feelings. So when we're feeling scared, we act differently than we're feeling confident, right? Mm -hmm. So any thought we have produces a feeling and that's what then drives our action. So say you have the thought, oh my gosh, I completely failed. And then you start feeling insecure. How are you going to show up? Like mm -hmm. your action from that feeling of insecurity is definitely not going to be like, okay, let's get up and try again. I totally got this because mm -hmm. your thought is creating this feeling that's making you feel, you know, really insecure. And then your action is going to be, not one that's going to want to get back up and be confident, right? Right. That so if you think about like the actions are also then what create our results. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to the thought, the thought I completely failed, what result are you going to get from that thought? You're going to feel crummy. You're going to not show up or try again. And so then you are going to fail. Mm. So basically you just proved your thought true. Your thought became mm. your result because it created a feeling that then drove your action. And then your result is exactly what you were thinking. Right. So if so, we flip that. Yeah, I was just gonna say, when you flip that, then. Then you can get the same exact pattern, but in a positive way. So let's say, say, let's say the circumstance, which maybe you failed at something, maybe you set a goal and you didn't quite reach it um, for your month. Okay, so that would be like a factual circumstance that you could actually prove. Okay, my numbers were here and I wanted them there. Okay, so you could in the first you could, in the first thing we talked about, you could see I failed and then it could cause all those negative feelings. Uh, if you had a different thought about it, like, well, I didn't quite make it, but by golly, I'm going to keep trying. Or I don't know, what's another thought you could think that's positive, Polly? Oh, so, I'm full of um, okay, so you know keep trying uh you know shoot for the moon you land among stars like I don't know <laughs> yeah so if you choose a thought and it has to be a thought that you believe like I mean this oh sorry no I was gonna ahead. say this just happened to 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 me um a few months ago I was really really shooting for a goal um like a really big team goal and um basically we fell short of it by just like a couple hundred dollars. I mean, it, we were so close and you know, there's a lot of hard work that went to it and you know, yeah. I, 
I, I knew it wasn't going to happen. And I could have, I mean, like, there are other people, um, you know, other uh, sideline sisters or, or whatever, who I, I've shared stuff with, and they'll, they'll be like, oh my gosh, you know, it's so crushing, that's so hard, like, you know, take a break, whatever. And um, I think for me, I just immediately was like, holy cow, like, I think that we got so much momentum under us that month. It was really inspiring to see so many people working so hard. And, you know, I really shot for the moon and I landed among the stars, which is so amazing. Like, I just tried to look at all the good at what came out of working the goal, even though, you know, I didn't achieve it and just thought I can try again. Like, there's no point in giving up. You know, I was so close and I just, I couldn't look at it as a full failure because it just, you know, a lot, like, even though I didn't hit the rank I was going for, there were still like six other girls who rank advanced, like, because of all the work that was happening. So it wasn't like it was a total failure, like, there, like so much good came out of it. So, so that is yeah. going to be a totally different result for you. So you're, you're choosing to think we have so much momentum or we almost made it we're so close or we can totally do it next month or whatever. Choosing any one of those thoughts is going to create a much better feeling. Like what, what do you feel when you think that? What's the feeling that you have? I mean, I feel so much more hopeful and feel willing to try again, you know, versus if, because I know I have had months or wherever, well, I'll think like, Oh my gosh, I'm so done, (laughs) you know, or like, you know, I think that basically the times when I do, let negative thoughts creep in and feel like I'm failing, then I just want to quit and I don't want to do it anymore. Right. Right. But like the times when I am, you know, like thinking positively, like I'm totally following this. I'm totally seeing what you're saying with it, with the producing a feeling, even though I was bummed about not hitting the goal. Right. Since my thought was that's okay. I shot for the moon. I landed among the stars. Yes, I still felt a little bummed, but I still felt and could see like the hope, right? which kind of led me to, you know, taking more action, like to keep going instead of being like, I failed, (laughs) you know? Yeah, exactly. So your thought about it actually created some momentum for you, gave you a feeling of confidence and hope because you saw it was possible. And then from Mm -hmm. that feeling, then it's going to drive you to do whatever it takes to make it happen next month, right? Because you yeah. already got so close. And so your result eventually is going to be you're going to reach your goal. I love that. Whereas you wouldn't if you were thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just going to quit. This is too hard. Yeah. Oh, totally. So um, I think have everything to do with the results that we get. Everything. Everything to do with it. I've heard, what, what do you think about, um, I've heard people okay, like trying to think how to word this. Um, you know, like you think or say something as like, as if it's already happened or um, like, can you speak about that? Like, yeah, absolutely. So there's this really great thing I love to do. It's, it's, well, we create like an intentional outcome. So, um, I like to think of it as like, what is my future self going to look like or what, you know, what, where do I want to go? Where you kind of daydream and, and write down like what your goal is, where you want to be at the end of whatever your road is or what you're working towards. And then you just be really detailed about it. Like my future self is going to be confident. Like these are just some personal things for me. Like I'm not going to have mind drama around food. I'm going to feel free in my body. I'm going to be confident to wear nice clothes. I'm going to um, be able to run a half marathon, which I'm going to do this summer, by the way. Um, just those kind of things that you like, you want to reach. So in your business, it could be, I'm going to reach this certain number. I'm going to get promoted to this level or whatever it is. What will I be like? What will that person be like? So you make that all really clear in your mind. And then you start asking yourself, what are the kinds of thoughts I'm going to need to think to be that? And, and how can I do that right now? Ooh, what are the thoughts? Okay, say that again. What are the thoughts I need to think? What are the thoughts I need to think or that I will be thinking when I'm my future self? Or you could define that however you want, like when I reach my goal or whatever. But we become something along the way. 
Like we become the person that achieved that success. Yeah. And so imagining what are the thoughts I need to think in order to, to achieve that goal? Mm -hmm. How will I be thinking when I'm there? And then start adopting those thoughts now. Like things like I'm unstoppable. I can do anything. I have the power to create the results I want in my life or, and then start practicing those thoughts. Now, even if you don't totally believe them, as you start practicing them, you will become more familiar with them and then you will start to believe them. Yeah. There's a lot of power in that. Another thing that I've done that I, I have found so much help in having done this is I wrote a letter to my future self. Mm -hmm. No, from my future self to my, who I am now. So my future self wrote a letter okay. to me and like already having get, gotten where I want to go, then I wrote a, like a pep talk, kind of a letter to myself. Okay. Yeah. Like write a pep talk from your future self. I yeah, love that. It is so powerful. And it's something that you can read. I'm going to find it because I keep it here in my little notebook. Um, okay. I'll read it if you want. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I want to hear because I'm like, as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, hmm, what would I say? I don't even know like what I would say. So I would love to hear if you're comfortable. So this is kind of a relation to my, because as you know, like any struggle we have, it doesn't just go away. And that was one of the things I kind of had a misconception about. I thought when I reach my goal weight, everything will be better. And then for the rest of my life, I'm not going to struggle with my weight. Well, that's mm -hmm. a big thing. <laughs> because okay, yep. like, the struggle's always there. It's something you always have to work on. So this is what I wrote to myself. I said, Jessica, be true to yourself. Stop sabotaging yourself. Just love and be kind and respect you. You have such power within you to accomplish anything you put your mind to. You have the tools, the support, and everything you need. Make a choice and stick to it. Prove to yourself that you are capable. You are worth it. You can change the world one person at a time. You deserve to love you and feel the happiness and self-respect that only you can create. I love you and I believe in you. Love your future self. Mm. Gosh, so, I mean, if I read a letter like that every day. <laughs> I know. And the thing is, is this is me. Like, I am already this person. I'm just reminding myself. Like, remember, this is who you are. You have this in you. Mm -hmm. You I love that. It. And doing that from a business perspective and by the way like i'm now an entrepreneur too i'm trying to build my coaching business so i feel all the feels of making goals and trying to put yourself out there and taking risks and it's really uncomfortable yes <laughs> one of my favorite things that i say one of my mantras is there's no there's no comfort in the growth zone and there's no growth in the comfort zone so when you're so doing good. things that are stretching you or making you feel uncomfortable in a good way um it, you know you're growing and that's kind of yeah. how you know you know but then what's great is your comfort zone expands and becomes bigger and there are things that i do now that two and a half years ago i like would i I would say two and a half years ago, I would never have the confidence or comfort to be able to even approach my cousin who I know to be like, Hey, would you be down to do a training for my team? Like I would never have thought that I was capable or, you know, somebody who, who would feel comfortable or confident enough to host a zoom call, find a speaker, talk, hey. have a conversation talk about it. Like, no, there's no way, you know, but you know, slowly over time, your comfort zone starts growing as you start like to develop oh, skills and stuff. But it's not to say yeah. that, you know, negative thoughts all the time are trying to like creep in and oh. stop you from finding that success. And, yeah. and can I everything. just speak to that for a minute? I want to explain yeah. about how, how, why that happens because this has really helped me understanding how my brain works to realize there's actually nothing wrong with me. When that mm -hmm. happens or any of us. So one of the things I've learned in my life coach schooling, it's been really powerful. It's the way our brains work. And some of you may already know all this, but we have two parts of our brain and they both have really important functions, but the lower part of our brain is called the subconscious brain. Um, I mean, that may not be the scientific term for it, but that's, that's where all our subconscious thoughts are. So all the things we do automatically, like brushing our teeth and driving to work and you know, all the things that we don't really have to think about because we've done mm -hmm. them so often, they're just delegated to our lower brain because that's a more efficient use 
of our brain. Like we just don't really have to make a lot of, take a lot of energy to access those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. um, our upper brain is our prefrontal cortex. And that's like the logical part of our brain where we uh, look to the future. We make decisions. Um, we think about consequences. We're like future focused from that part of our brain. And that part of our brain takes a lot more energy and it's more uncomfortable for us to use. So we function mostly in our lower brain and that's where a negative thoughts creep in. Especially if it's a thought that we've thought repetitively, it just becomes automatic. If we mm. failed a lot in the past and we just kind of believe that we're always gonna fail, that's something our lower brain continues to offer us because when we think a thought often, it creates a neural pathway. And, and becomes automatic. That's how it works, like with brushing your teeth. Like there's this automatic thing that drives an action, like I know to pick up my toothbrush, get it wet, put the toothpaste on it, and I, I don't have to think about brushing my teeth because my brain automatically has a pathway for that. And that's the true, same is true for our negative thoughts. If we think them repeatedly, they become really natural and we have to consciously acknowledge like oh my goodness this thought is really causing some problems for me and we have to change it by going to our upper brain and addressing that like okay i don't want to think that thought anymore because it's making me feel discouraged because the thought is creating that feeling and that discouraged feeling is driving me to the pantry or causing me to go on social media to avoid whatever work i need to do or whatever uncomfortable thing there is so our brain is always trying to protect us and that's why those negative thoughts are just so easy to believe. Be like, yeah, you really shouldn't keep trying because that's going to be uncomfortable. And it's much better just to eat the chocolate or flip through social media. Right. So that's okay. like totally normal. Totally normal how our brains are supposed to work. But when we're onto it, then we can, that's when we can be like, okay, I see what's happening here. I don't want to think that anymore. And then we have to consciously choose a different thought to replace it with. So this is reminding me of, so this is like gold. I love this. Like, um, this is reminding me of, I, I just picked up this off the bookshelf at a cute boutique, the world according to Mr. Rogers, who is somebody oh, I, I love totally it. love, but I read this last night. Um, and I had to reread it like five times cause I was like really taking it in, but it says confronting our feelings and giving them appropriate expression always takes strength, not weakness. It takes strength to acknowledge our anger and oh, sorry, it takes strength to acknowledge our anger and sometimes more strength yet to curb the aggressive urges anger may bring and to channel them into nonviolent outlets. It takes strength to face our sadness and to grieve and to let our grief and anger flow in tears when they need to. It takes strength to talk about our feelings and to reach out for help and comfort yes. when we need it. So That's this so is like, it's making me think so like, I, it made me think of my parenting because there's a lot of times where I lose my patience and I might yell at my kids, um, you know, and become angry and not talk in a nice way. And I always think to myself after, like, what the heck? Like, why do I respond that way? You know, and that is totally like the lower brain. Yes. You know, like you're naturally just, it's easier. It takes less energy to just like yep. respond in an angry way. Like, according to Mr. Rogers, <laughs> no, you know, like, it takes more strength, more energy to go to your upper brain and yes. say, I'm not going to respond like that. And then, like you say, you have to do it enough times to, like, rewire your exactly. pathway so that way exactly. it becomes, like, kindness becomes automatic. Like, this, I'm yes. having, like, I'm, my mind is being blown right now, okay? Like... I feel like reading that last night, hearing that from you today, like I'm feeling courage because I, uh, and encouragement because sometimes I sit there and I think one of the things that's really hard, I think anytime when you have a goal or something you're working on, that it takes a long time, you know, yeah, like absolutely. nothing happens overnight. And, you know, when I think I'm trying to become a kinder and more patient mom, um, or whatever, like the goal is, even with like exercise and health and all that stuff, like you can't work out once and have a good day of eating and then like achieve your goals. You can't totally. same with one good day where you don't yell once or whatever, you know, like you've got to have many, many days until it becomes, ha that must be what it is. Like rewiring is habit, you know? 
Absolutely, because that's where the habits are formed is in our lower brain. That's what drives what we do a lot of the time, like I said. So I want to speak to that, what you were saying about the, the small steps that you take every day, because it's those small little decisions we make every day that seem mundane are what creates the momentum that lead to success. So mm -hmm. you're right, like have one amazing day is not really going to make much of a difference if all the other days you're not making those same choices. But if you just make small changes consistently, it leads to something really great. And that's what I found with my weight loss journey. There were days that I failed, but the small consistent things I did every day are what got me to the result I wanted. And that's the same is true in business. Any goal that you set, it's the small, consistent, and sometimes uncomfortable things that we have to do every single day. And so using your upper brain to just be aware, of, like I have to choose that because you're trying to override that natural human tendency because we want to be comfortable. We don't want to feel mm -hmm. all the uncomfortable stuff. It's just easier. And that's, that's our brain working properly. But we have the power to override that when we use our, our upper brain, our conscious brain, to change the thoughts. And the first step is just being aware of it. Just noticing mm -hmm. how often those thoughts come and then consciously make an effort to choose thoughts that are going to change that. And repeating those thoughts every day, it's going to take time. But pretty soon, you'll create a new neural pathway. Mm -hmm. that creates that new action that is the desired action that you really want to have. Yes. So dude, powerful. This is so good. This so is, powerful. yes, it's all very, very powerful. Um, and last month, we, have you read the book, The Slight Edge? I haven't. Ooh, I okay, it's by it. Jeff Olson. We read it last month as a team. And this, it actually talks about, I think you'd really enjoy it, but it, it talks about a lot of the same stuff you're kind of talking about. But one of the things that, that, um, he was hinting on is that the difference between people who are successful and people who are not are the successful people they know that they have to be consistent in the mundane tasks of every day yes. Yes. and they have found purpose in the mundane because they know that the mundane is what makes the difference and so but even then he goes one step further that people who are successful remain successful because even after they've achieved the goal, they continue to do the mundane. They continue yes. to take the small steps. So like, yes, using this as an example in like our color street business, um, we have something as a team that we do called the power hour. And it's essentially like six steps, six things that we spend time on every day. Hopefully you can get it done in about an hour. Um, and, but what it is, is it's so small, consistent, things that we do every day and it's through doing those you know day in and day out consistently um that people find success and i mean i i've seen that in my own business when i have focused on doing my power hour and i've not let the bigger things take over but instead yeah. i just like totally do you know fo just focus just on that and that's the times when i've seen the most growth and the most success in my own business which is awesome so um yeah, there's something to be said about, you know, finding, uh, what's the word, like, being okay with the mundane and knowing that it makes, it, that is what makes the difference, yes, you know? It, it truly does. I want to speak really quickly to failing, because I yeah. think we have a misconception about failing. I know we're almost out of time, but um, failing is actually a really powerful tool, and I'm really good at it. I'm, I'm good at failing, I mean. <laughs> But I I'm proud of that because there's, well, the first, there's two types of failing. There's a worthy fail, which is when we fail and we learn something from it and it propels us to take action and know what to change. Like it's a data, uh, data point. Like, okay, that didn't work. So what do I need to change and try again? So the worthy fail is, um, we can use it to help us to grow. Um, then there's the escape fail where we just kind of give up. We don't keep our commitments. We basically fail ahead of time because we don't want to feel the discomfort of failing. So mm. we just kind of decide, oh, that didn't work. Well, shoot, I'm just not going to even try again. Um, but if we can change our thoughts about failing into it's helping propel us forward and not make it mean anything about ourselves when we fail, and remember that almost every successful person is successful because they failed over and over and over and over and they didn't give up, then failure can actually be an indicator that we're on the right track. Um, that reminds me of that quote 
Thomas Edison, right? He said, like, I learned, he, he basically said something like, I discovered however many ways, like a thousand ways how to not create yeah. a light bulb, you know? Totally. And I'm like, that's a great outlook yeah. on failure. I like, know. So failure gets a bad rap. It's actually a really powerful yeah. tool. And if we're just willing to feel uncomfortable and just get back up and keep trying and not make it mean anything about us, then can actually be the answer to how we achieve success by being willing to fail as many times as it takes to reach our goal. Yeah. I want to, I just really quick. I want to, um, sorry. I want to see what that quote is, the light bulb quote. I'm like Googling it so I can read it. Yeah. Oh, he says, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 that won't work. Many of life's failures are people who, did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Yep. That I, so I've true. never, ever, ever thought of failure being a tool before. It so is, that's awesome. It's, cool. um, it's like a data point for us. It, it, it's the best way we can get information about what we need to do to improve is by failing. I love that. Okay. We are almost out of time, like less than a minute. So really quick, tell us how we can like follow you and keep in touch with you. Yes. So um, like I said, I'm a brand new life coach, but I have some great things to share and I have a blog. You can find me at jessicawalkercoaching.blogspot. And then also you can follow me on social media under Jessica Walker Coaching. And I post things on Instagram and Facebook and I'm always looking for people to coach. And I have really great things I can teach you that will change your life. But ultimately you change your life. I just teach awesome. you this. I love that. Thank you so much for your time and all that you shared with us. I absolutely loved it. I took like three pages of notes. So thanks for having me, Holly. All right. We'll see you later. Bye, Bye. guys.